Hello everyone, my name is Heather and welcome back to my channel. Today um, I'm filming a video for more of my Journey to Minimalism series and I see this video a lot. Um, it's often recommended to me because I watch a lot of videos on minimalism. <laughs> That's probably why YouTube's algorithm is constantly recommending these types of videos to me. And that is things I no longer buy. I'm 26 years old, okay? And I have just, like it's finally hit me the value of a dollar, okay? And I think that a lot of things have helped me learn this lesson, obviously being more on my own. Also, another thing that's kind of like helped me learn the value of a dollar is project panning, holy moly. Like buying a product and using it up has really taught me like what I'm spending my money on, like how much am I getting for my dollar, that kind of thing. And then also clothing, like, what am I spending my money on, on in terms of what I'm going to wear? Like, how long is this thing going to last? How much am I going to wear this thing? Am I going to get my money's worth out of this thing? Um, and also, like, becoming a minimalist, it's just made me pickier about the things I buy. The things that I bring into my home. I think about it in terms of, like, is this something I'm going to declutter someday? If this is something I might declutter someday, I'm not going to spend my hard-earned money on it. Or my husband's hard-earned money on it. Know what I'm saying? <laughs> I didn't used to buy a ton of fashion magazines, but like I, I really used to like Glamour magazine. I used to be subscribed to Glamour. The reason I don't buy them anymore is firstly because I feel like they all started to say the same thing. I'm spending four or five dollars on this magazine. I'm not learning anything, you know, I'm not, I don't feel like I'm a better person for this. And a lot of the time it would just make me feel crappy about myself because I would look at all of these things that were being advertised because like my second reason I don't buy the, them anymore is because it's like every other page is an advertisement. And even when it's not an advertisement, I started to realize that a lot of the products that are featured, not necessarily in the advertisements, are probably advertisements like these are probably things that were sent by companies to these magazine editors which kind of like gives them that push to feature them in the magazine they might even be paid to be featuring this in the magazine like that's again separate from the advertisement it was making me feel bad about the stuff that I couldn't afford and it made me feel bad that I wasn't stylish enough or I didn't own enough makeup it made me feel like I wasn't skinny enough or like toned enough or pretty enough like I didn't have enough money made me feel like I wasn't successful like a lot of the articles didn't even really apply to me and I was just like why am I why am I spending my money on this it's such a waste of money starting a few months back maybe like January maybe December January I started the process of going cruelty free and yes I gotta say I am not a hundred percent cruelty free yet it is very challenging to 100% be cruelty free for me. There's some things I'm still struggling with, struggling to find cruelty free alternatives for. So I'm not perfect. But especially when it comes to makeup, like specifically makeup, I don't buy things that are not cruelty free. I still own a couple things that I'm trying to use up, but I don't buy it anymore because I do not think now that there are so many ingredients that have been proven safe for cosmetics, I think it's unnecessary to test on animals. That's my opinion. I used to be subscribed to Nature Box and Birch Box. Those are the two I can think of off the top of my head. And definitely Birch Box in particular. I unsubscribed from that partially to save money at the time I, I wasn't working. So I was like, this is just not essential. So I don't need it anymore. But also a lot of the samples, I just wouldn't use them up all the way. It just started to clutter my makeup and my skincare and hair care collection. I don't know currently like if they have a way where you can get a birch box and guarantee that the items that come to you are cruelty free. <laughs> I started being a vegetarian back towards the beginning of April, so personally, I don't buy meat or fish anymore. Um, I'm not a vegan, I, I don't eat plant-based currently, so I do still buy some animal products, um, but no meat or fish. My husband does, but I don't. So when I am buying clothes, which is so rare, 
I really think, is this something I am going to wear a lot? The clothes that I have, you might notice, I wear a lot of the same things in my videos. And that's because like, those are the clothes I wear like all the time. Um, I wear clothes to death. I just don't own that many clothes. I actually really wanna do like a closet tour or like my clothes collection um, so you can see what I own. And I do gotta say though, I feel like there are gaps in my wardrobe and I'm trying to, I'm like, it's hard. Cause like, again, I don't want to buy something I'm only going to wear a little bit. So it's hard. It's really hard for me to shop for clothes. People die to make clothes. If you believe it, like definitely watch the true cost on Netflix. It's an amazing documentary that will change your whole perspective on the clothing industry, like the fashion industry. And so it does, it makes it a lot harder for me to buy clothes because I don't need clothes. I have I could do a whole video on this topic. So, and when I say like, I'm not, I don't want to buy clothes that I might wear someday. I mean, like, I'm not going to buy a, a clothing item that I feel like I couldn't currently feel confident enough to wear, whether um, I don't feel like I'm skinny enough to wear it or like stylish enough to wear it. When I'm contemplating buying an article of clothing, I am not going to buy it if I, if I wouldn't wear it the day or like within like the week that I that that item comes to me or that I, that I bring that item home. I like, I have two piercings. This second piercing has closed up, which I mean, is not even, I'm not even sad about it. I don't wear earrings, so um, it's not that big of a deal for me. I'm not gonna buy something just for the sake of decorating my home. If something really speaks to me, I might get it. I've moved into a bigger place and there are definitely there's a lot of wall space that I'm like, wow, I guess maybe should I like get wall art? Like, should I get things to like decorate this? And I just, I haven't because I'm like, I don't want to get something that's just going to like clutter up the space just for the sake of decorating. I no longer buy the newest tech gadgets to replace my fully functioning if slightly older models of the same gadget. So for example, big example is the iPhone. I think I still have the iPhone 6. I don't know. I got it before the iPhone 6S came out, like right before the iPhone 6S came out. And it's fine. Like, I mean, there are some things that are not quite working as well, like the little silence button right here. And sometimes it like crashes. I'm just not going to replace it until it's really just not working anymore. I don't feel the need to get the newest model. They take up such unnecessary space. Like nowadays, we can just... I don't know, you can get like a Spotify membership, you can get an Apple Music membership and just have access to almost, like maybe almost unlimited music for so much cheaper than like buying all these CDs. Do people buy CDs anymore? I'm sure there are people who buy CDs, but like I just, I don't. I actually don't even own any more CDs, honestly. Um, and as far as DVDs, I still own DVDs, but I don't buy them anymore. Like if, we just don't even watch a lot of movies, but if there's some, if there's a movie that we really, really, really want to watch and for some reason we can't rent it at Redbox or like, Amazon video or something, then we'll buy a digital version on Amazon. I no longer buy books that I will never read. We used to do that and now we don't. I don't feel the need to get souvenirs just for the sake of souvenirs anymore. Um, and it used to be magnets, like that was our thing. We would get magnets and now we just we have all these magnets and we've gotten rid of some of them, but I feel like we need to get rid of a little more because I don't even, I haven't even put them on our new fridge because I like the look of a fridge with nothing on it. So uh, I haven't gotten rid of them yet because I know sometimes we like to put things on fridges and we have some really, really strong magnets. So I don't know, but I don't buy them anymore. <laughs> So if you watched my 20 lessons I've learned from The Minimalists, I do talk about uh, a lesson about just-in-case items, and those are some of the hardest items to get rid of. So why would I bring something into my life that is a just-in-case item? Like, you buy it when you need it, you know what I'm saying? I buy stuff that I'm gonna use up, and when it's empty, I go get another one. This has to do with food, and it also has to do with, like, makeup or, like, skincare. I only want to have what fits in my space. 
I don't care how much I love this YouTuber, if they tell me to buy something or feel like you should totally have this in your makeup collection or, or whatever, like I don't jump to buy it. If I didn't know about it or feel the need to own that item before watching their video, I am not going to buy that thing just because now suddenly I know it exists. <laughs> I was really, really bad at this. I used to play a game called Bubble Witch 2. I was obsessed with this game. And when I would get frustrated with a level, I would buy things. I would pay money to use things that would help me beat the level. <sighs> what an unfortunate just waste of money. That's just throwing money down the drain. And I don't even want to tell you how much money I spend on Bubble Witch. I'm not, I'm, I don't even know. I don't even know, but it is an embarrassing amount of money. I'm sure I could go back in my bank account and look at it and I don't want to. Like, I would vomit. What a waste of money. I no longer buy into the idea that burying myself under thousands of dollars of student loan debt is essential to success in life. I am buried under thousands of dollars of student loan debt. I went to a four year university. I did it in three years. I graduated in th three years, but still. And then I was in graduate school for a while too. And I was like under thousands of dollars. And I realized like, this is not my passion. This isn't even what I want to do with my life. And I am taking out thousands of dollars of money that is not mine to pay for something that I don't even want to do. I don't need to do that to be successful. Like I have to redefine success in my mind. And again, that could be a whole other video. Um, that might be a video I would do on my vlogging channel, by the way, um, just kind of like a sit down chit chat kind of video. Um, so if you're not subscribed to my vlogging channel, The Vapid Vlogger, it gets real. <laughs> I no longer buy into the idea that debt is essential at all, okay? This is part of um, the 20 lessons I learned from The Minimalists, which is a video I recently uploaded. There is no such thing as good debt. It, there's just no such thing. This is a matter of opinion, so you might not agree with me, and that's okay, that's okay. This is just something that resonates with me, okay? So I don't buy into the idea that debt is good, that debt is a tool. So I am currently, my husband and I both are in the process of getting everything paid off and not getting into any more debt. When you're in debt, you're broke because you have negative dollars. <laughs> I no longer want to buy a house or a car if I cannot pay for it outright with cash. Although in terms of a house, I don't need to, personally, I don't feel like I need to put it put 100% down, um, I would want to put down at least 50%. And then in terms of having to borrow money for that, uh, at the most, oh, 15 year, but I really would like it to be like a seven year fixed rate mortgage. But that's such a long way off. Like right now, I am perfectly happy renting. In fact, I love my new place. I really hope you enjoyed this video. It was a bit of a long one and it gets a little kind of ranty. I hope it doesn't get preachy because I don't ever want to be preachy. You are so free to have your own opinion. Please have your own opinions. And I respect people so much for sticking with their opinions as long as it doesn't hurt anybody like do what you want you believe what you want just don't hurt people obviously please let me know in the comments um, if you're also on a minimalism journey what are some things you no longer buy give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it subscribe to my channel for more minimalism videos project pound videos bullet journal videos with all that said thanks so much for watching i will see you guys in my next video bye